folks. Today I want to talk about prayer. It's one of those parts of the Christian life that we all know we should be doing more regularly and faithfully, but if we're honest, it can be something of a struggle for us, whether we've been a Christian for five months or five decades. Prayer doesn't come naturally to most of us, which can leave us feeling guilty, stuck in a rut or distant from God. Our prayers often feel like shopping lists of requests for upgrades to our lifestyle or last minute pleas for grace to survive through the grind of another day of lockdown. If these words resonate with you, I hope you're encouraged because you're not the only one struggling. Contrary to what you might believe, not everybody has it nailed down and sorted out. The struggle with prayer is more common than you might think. But that doesn't mean that it's a good place for us to be or it's a worthy excuse to get us off the hook and off our knees. I won't pretend that the next few minutes will instantly transform you and your prayer life into that of a prayer warrior like George Muller, but I do want to suggest some simple thoughts to help us all get started, or restarted, or continue to plod along towards deeper prayer and richer communion with God. In Romans 8, 15 and 16, the Apostle Paul writes, You did not receive the spirit of slavery, to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Because of the gospel, we've been brought into a real living relationship with God. Jesus is our brother, we are family, and God is our Heavenly Father. So prayer is not writing a help message on a scrap of paper, shoving it into a bottle, throwing that bottle into the sea in the vain hope that the wind and the waves will somehow take it to shore and put it into the hands of someone who will read it and help us. No, prayer is talking to our Heavenly Father, who has gone to unimaginable lengths and unfathomable costs to bring us into the total security of being in his family. When we come to prayer, let's not forget that. Let us draw near with confidence, for we're talking to our Father. He's made a way for us to come to him, and he invites us to pray. There needs to be no hesitation or fear in doing this. The, the finished work of Jesus means that all the barriers that once stood between us and God have been completely removed. We are his children, his dearly beloved. Now think about how different children are to adults. Adults have plans and schedules and ambitions and lots to cross off their to-do list every day. Children, on the other hand, don't usually live under the delusion that they are in control of their time, their destinies or their world. When they need help, when they're faced with fears or questions or concerns, they know they need to go to the right person. That's someone bigger than themselves to get help, to find comfort or security. So they quickly usually run to mom or dad and rest in the solid trustworthiness of their parent. And that's the kind of children that the Bible calls us to be. Those who trust and rest in our good Heavenly Father. In Psalm 62 verse 8, in the midst of difficult circumstances, with no light at the tunnel as yet, David exhorts us to cry out to God, our Heavenly Father. He says, Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. This is God's invitation to his children to let words flow out of our hearts and our mouths to our Heavenly Father, who is full of compassion and grace and able to help us in time of need. This is what it looks like to be part of his family. We speak words to him. Words of pain, words of praise, words of insecurity, words of fear. In fact, any words that seem important to us whether they are concerns over our family, our finances, our health, our jobs, our friends and our futures. They can be trivial, mundane or important. But whatever it might be, every day presents us with multiple perfect occasions to pour out our hearts to our Father who loves us. So, tell him how you feel. Tell him what you find difficult. Tell him how your desires can get mixed up and how you have conflicting longings. Tell him why you find it so hard to pray or to trust him. Tell him the nagging questions and the doubts that you have. Tell him how you want things to be different and ask him to help you. Ask him to help you trust in him in the midst of the storm that you're experiencing. Ask to know more of his presence 
is trustworthy love and the good news about Jesus in a way that leads to increasing peace and rest. You know, too often in our day-to-day -day lives and anxieties, we look for something more complicated to help us because prayer seems so basic and simplistic. But God tells us to put our thoughts and our feelings into words and then pour out those words to him in prayer. Like a child to his or her parent, let's run to him, unburden ourselves in prayer, empty out all of our anxieties and our confusion and our griefs and our shames and our struggles and our pains onto God. He tells us to, and he can handle it. Charles Spurgeon once wrote about this verse, God at all times deserves our confidence, and we at all times need to place our confidence in him. Lean ever, ye saints, on him. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. Ye to whom his love is revealed, reveal yourself to him. His heart is set on you, so lay bare your hearts to him. Turn the vessel of your soul upside down in his secret presence, and let your inmost thoughts, desires, sorrows and sins be poured out like water. Hide nothing from him, for you can hide nothing. To the Lord unburden your soul. To keep our griefs to ourselves is to hoard up wretchedness. The stream will swell and rage if you dam it up. Give it a clear course and it leaps along and creates no alarm. Sympathy we need, and if we unload our hearts at Jesus' feet, we shall obtain a sympathy as practical as it is sincere and as consolatory as it is ennobling. Here then is the best of reasons for resorting to him whenever sorrows weigh upon our bosoms. He is our refuge. Left to ourselves, we can so easily end up with our thoughts predicting tomorrow full of doomsday scenarios with no answers. But when we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer and tell him our worries, we will discover that he is our refuge. That he is bigger and stronger than anything we currently face or could face tomorrow that we can trust upon him in every emergency, that he will guide us when we are in doubt, protect us when we are in danger, and supply us when we are in want. And he will strengthen us for every good word and work. And his word assures us that he will be our shelter and fortress, and that the miracle of his peace and rest will come to rule our hearts and minds. So let me encourage you, pray. Perhaps you need to be humble and realistic, Perhaps you need to aim for prayer little and often. A few minutes a day will be the best approach if you are currently struggling to pray. Five minutes a day is almost certainly going to be better than 30 minutes of binge praying on a Sunday afternoon, but nothing for the rest of the week. But five minutes a day will anchor us and make us active in our relationship with God. It will also provide a great base for gradual expansion from five to ten minutes a day, and perhaps even more after that over time. And remember this, as someone once said, our prayers may be awkward, our attempts may be feeble, but since the power of prayer is in the one who hears, not in the one who says it, our prayers really do make